on the news, we're seeing all these different type of hackers being able to dump out all of the usernames, emails, passwords, credit card information, and so on. But the question is, how do they do it? And in today's tutorial, you'll be seeing and learning exactly how to do just that. It's crazy, I know. And before we get started, kids, hacking is legal. If you get caught hacking, do not tell them that you know who is Mr. Hacker Lahoy. Now, the fundamental part of thing is that you first have a website. And of course, in this website, this is where you have your users who may be surfing the site and they'll be able to look at all the content within the site that you're hosting. And of course, this can be hosted on, say, your Nginx or it could be hosted on, say, Apache, which is, again, all these very popular application servers that you can easily host on the Internet to get all these different sites started and they can run all this processing, all this different logic in it. Behind the scenes, there's typically a database server and this database server will be housing your username or your password password and your credit card information and all those different details within them. So what we can see here is all these different details are kept within the database and the application server when it connect to the database in order to retrieve this information to be able to check on your username, your password and all of that. And in terms of security, majority of time what's happening here is that this access is strictly only provided to the application server, meaning that no one else is able to gain access in the system. So if a user tries to go directly into the database, they'll be met with the inability to access into that service, into that port, because it is not open up to, say, the internet or to a typical user. So what a hacker has to do then here in this case, we have on the left side, Mr. Hacker Lloyd, which is your best friend, your BFF. And here, Mr. Hacker Lloyd would then have to target into the application server and has to inject what we call SQL injection. So now we'll be asking, what exactly is SQL? So what SQL does for us is that SQL sends instructions into the database to interact with it in order to retrieve all these different username, password fields, and make them available into the application server, which can then run all these different logical checks. For example, did the user who entered a password does it match with the password over here under the username that's been supplied? And going back to the hacker over here, what SQL injection is trying to do is to bypass some of these different logics so that we are then able to gain unauthorized access into the database, listing down all these different usernames, passwords, credit card information from the backend system. So right in front of us, we're webgood.net, and here we have the employee mail. And of course, here it says the following. Are you looking to contact one of our employees? Use this phone to find your email quickly. So again, as I've shared, there's a backend database to do to look up for it. So we can enter name, so I can start A. Find employee, and we can see right here we have first name, last name, and email address. So what we can do now is that there is a request heading into the server, and what we can do is to go to the top right corner, click on the Foxy Proxy, click on the Burp Suite, and once you're done with that, go ahead and open up a terminal, and we can launch Burp Suite right from here. So enter Burp Suite, and here we're starting a Burp Suite to be our interceptor, so that we can see all the different type of requests that are going over into the server, and we can decide how we want to change up the request, or perhaps even load the request to a separate software. So in this case, click next, start burp, and now we are getting burp suite community edition started. And go under the proxy tab, and we can see the intercept is on. So once you have that, what we can do now is to go ahead and click find employee again, and we can see the interception right here. So we have a post method going to SQL injection.aspx. So what we can do now is we can literally copy everything right here. Okay, you can do a right click, and you can do the copy, or you can copy to a file, whichever the case is. So I can do a copy right here. I can go back over into terminal. And what I can do now is I can echo and I can copy and paste it over here and I can send this out to a file. So I can enter, say, into a request.txt, hit enter on that, and I can do a cat request.txt. So we have now saved that request into a file. Next up, we can take advantage of this file that we have saved and we can use a tool like, say, SQL map, and we can target this file by entering request.txt, hit enter on that, and right here, SQL map is sending payloads over into target site so that we can find out where are the different vulnerable parameters that we can go after. And right here, we have already ran through the attack and we have locked the file over. So we can see the following, that the backend database is MySQL. And right here, we have different MySQL union query, or we have time-based blind. And as I scroll up a little further, we can see the different parts of the vulnerable injection points that we can go after. So you can see here, we have the parameter, so body, content, placeholder, text name. And next up, what we can do here is enter SQL map. And what we want to see now are all the different types of databases within it. So I can go ahead and enter the following information. And we can see right here, we have a lot of different databases. So we have Briggs, BWABB, or we have GetBoo, Gallery, and all these different databases within it. And in this case, we'll be targeting 
web good coins and we want to find out all the tables within it and to dump out all of that passwords in the customer table okay and all i got to do right now is go ahead and enter the following all right so dash d followed by web good underscore coins dash dash tables all right so this will list out all the tables within this target database let's go ahead and do just that and right here we got a result this is crazy look at that 11 tables right here and the one that looks like what we are going after is going to be under customer login so let's go ahead and go after that so now I can change this over into dash T, followed by customer login, followed by double dash dump, hit enter on that. All right, and this will give us the opportunity to dump out all of the passwords. And right here, we got it. Look at that. All this of the different email addresses, as well as the password field. So you can see here, email, answer, password. And right here, these are all the different passwords that we managed to find. However, it looks a little strange. One thing for sure, these password fields are not hashes because hashes typically have fixed lengths. So in this case, we can see that there are varied lengths based on the different passwords. This looks like some form of encoding and they look pretty familiar. I'm going to go ahead and grab the first password and let's see whether we are able to decode it. So let's go ahead and enter the following, all right? So now what I'll do is go ahead and enter echo, followed by the password that we just copied and paste. And right here, what we can do is use base64, followed by dash dash decode, hit enter on that. Oh my, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six. No wonder it looks so familiar because that is my password. It's the best password in the world. People think that a hacker will be using a really complex and strong password, but I choose to do reverse psychology 101. And obviously, I don't just want one password. I want all of the passes decoded. So let's go ahead and do just that. So what I'm going to do now is to save all these different fields into a text file and after which we can process it, we can change up the format of it and begin decoding them at scale. So let's go ahead and copy the whole chunk of it. All right, so let's go ahead and click copy selection. So what I can do now is go ahead and enter echo. All right, followed by all of the information that we have copied. And what I can do next is go ahead and paste them all over into say password.txt. Hit enter on that. All right, I'm going to go clear and I will do a cat password.txt and let's see what we get. All right, so we got all this different information right here. Now what we can do next, go ahead and enter in a bouquet, followed by single quote. And this case, we are going to print number eight. All right, so dollar eight and then followed by the curly braces. And then what we can do next is go ahead and enter the file. So in this case, we have password.txt followed by base64. And then what we can do now is go ahead and enter, say base64 double dash decode, hit enter on that. And we got the information, all right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, password, love, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, princess, sunshine, I love you, and so on and so forth. So all this is different passwords. However, we do have an invalid input. And the reason for the error could be because of a vertical bar. So let's say I go ahead and enter the following, all right? And we can see here, we may have multiple of this vertical bar that may be producing the error, okay? So for example, if I do the following, all right, echo with vertical bar and base64 decode, hit enter on that, we get an invalid input. So in that case, what we would need to do is to be able to remove that from the list so that we're able to decode the rest of all those passwords. So let's go ahead and enter the following. All right, so we have the AWK print eight password. And here in this case, we want to trim away that. All right, so we have tr dash d followed by the vertical bar again. And now in this case, we have base64 dash dash decode and hopefully it works this time around. Let's go ahead and hit enter on that. There you go, we got it. We got all of the passwords right here. All right, and of course, there's a cleaner way for us to run through the parsing of all those data so that we are getting the precision on the password field, the password column, and be able to run through all of that decode. It is crazily fast, isn't it? How quickly we are able to find vulnerability of a website, after which being able to exploit that vulnerability, pulling out all of the information from the database system, and be able to break all of that passwords. And now that we have the usernames and the password field, we can literally do anything with those accounts. We can try to log into the Gmail, their Hotmail, and the Facebook account because they could be using the same password across all of these online accounts that they have. Turn the like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you do not get hacked.